Welcome to Unit 9, where we look at the word shall. We met shall in Unit 7 in the example text, and I said then we'll have a look at that troublemaker later. Well, this is later. What's the problem? It's the frequent misuse of the word shall in legal documents. Why is this a problem? In legal language, shall only has one legal meaning, to have a duty to do something. In other words, must. If you think about shall as expressing an obligation, you won't go too far wrong. However, legal drafters frequently misuse shall, and as such, shall has often ended up before the courts. The courts have then had to interpret shall to work out what the drafter actually intended, as the actual meaning of shall isn't clear in the applied context. In ruling on these cases, the courts have understood shall as referring to the future, in other words, will, giving permission, in other words, may, or being directory, or giving general advice or guidelines, in other words, should. The word shall can therefore mean four different things, even though it only has one legal definition. The resulting confusion has led to numerous cases. Not only do we have to think about shall and its multiple meanings, shall is used when there's absolutely no need for it to be used. What's the solution? Don't use shall. Use either will, must, may or should, depending on what message you're trying to communicate. Or use the correct form of the applicable verb if you think shall shouldn't be used. How? Take a few seconds to consider the example sentences. Look at the way shall is used, and for each sentence ask yourself which of the four meanings do you think shall means? Must, may, will or should, or indeed, if it's needed at all. Okay, let's have a look remembering that shall's only legal meaning is have a duty to do something or must. The first example is shareholder shall mean. What's happening here is that the drafter is setting out a definition. If we were to apply the correct meaning of shall, it would read the shareholder has a duty to mean, which is quite strange and of course the use of shall is wrong. Here there's no need to say shall at all, simply this should be shareholder means. The shareholders shall have the right to table motions. Is it correct to say the shareholder must have the right to table motions? Of course not. Here we understand the shareholder is being given a permission to do something. In that case, the correct option is may. The shareholders may table motions. The Polish courts shall have jurisdiction over. In this example, we're setting out a rule. As such, shall can be omitted. It should be, the Polish courts have jurisdiction over. It certainly doesn't make much sense to say, the Polish courts have a duty to have jurisdiction over. Let's have a look at a few more and see if we can correctly change shall in the following sentences. Objections to the proposed modification held by resident shall be filed upon the debtor. If you're ever slightly confused by a text, it's always a good idea to ask yourself what is the basic main message of that text. In this case, it's if a resident has an objection to the proposed modification, they should file it upon the debtor. Look at what we've just done there. In rewording the sentence, we've automatically translated shall into should. In other words, this text is directory, what should happen in a particular circumstance. However, as you'll see when you tackle the questions below, without further context, shall in this sentence could have different meanings. For example, it could be argued that this sentence gives the resident permission. In other words, shall means may. That the residents are allowed to object. The consumer shall have fully complied with the required conditions when. Another way to work out what shall could mean is to go through the definitions. Does shall mean must or have a duty to here? No. Does shall mean should or be directory here? No. Does shall in this case give permission? No. What this sentence does do, however, is talk about the future, when something is done, that is, at some future event. 
when the consumer will have complied with the required conditions. Here, the answer is will. Anyone bringing a claim shall, within 30 days after filing the action, file. Once again, the information that we have at hand doesn't give us one clean answer. Shall here could mean should. In other words, tell someone what to do in a certain circumstance. Or shall could describe an obligation. That is, the 30 days is a time limit and a penalty might apply if an action is not done. In that case, must is the correct understanding. Shall could even be understood as giving a permission. In that case, may could be used. We need more context to work out the actual meaning of shall. However, as you'll see in the questions below, even when you have enough context, shall could still mean different things. This ultimately highlights my point. Shall is by nature ambiguous. If you use shall, you will cause the reader problems. On the other hand, though, if you're representing a client in your home country and the dispute is based on the contract written in English and you see shall, it's a gift which may help you to interpret the contract in any way you see fit. Let's recap. If you're reading a document, ask yourself which of the four meanings which are attributable shall is meant. Must, will, should or may, or if indeed it's actually needed at all. If you're writing, don't use shall. Use one of the four alternatives or use the correct form of another verb instead. Now we know what the problem is, why it is a problem, and how to fix the problem, we can now test the rule by doing the questions below. However, if you're unsure about any of the points which I've made, please go back and watch the video again. Feel free to pause the video to review all examples at your own speed. After you do a question below, you can click to see a suggested answer. Just before you get started though, please note the following. Please read the question and the hint carefully to make sure you complete the questions properly. Don't just get stuck into the questions, read what you have to do first. In the suggested answer, there may also be further comments to a particular question, so please read these comments carefully. The suggested answers are just that, suggested. There may of course be other also correct ways to answer each question. I've tried to put in as many variants as I can, but for obvious reasons I can't write every single correct answer. So, as long as your answer follows the main points highlighted in the suggested answer, your answer should be okay. The questions are designed to practice the rule in this unit. So, although you can make further corrections to the rest of the text, based on the other rules in the course, the answer only concentrates on the rule in this unit. And finally, Please don't get lost in the legalities of the question text. It's there only to provide material to practice the rule, not to be a law lesson. All that being said, off you go.